I think everything boils down to managing your time in the best way possible. I mean, how you get to do it is is, is up to you. See, there's a there's a blueprint in front of me. We want to present ourselves at the best, but trying to compare yourself with somebody else, you know, comparing with Joneses as they call it and whatnot, yeah. like, is obviously never going to be that healthy in the long run. You're tuned into the Alpha Coach Podcast. They say faith can move mountains. You've got to believe it to achieve it. We believed in it and hence we're trying to achieve it. We're in the process of achieving it and learning every day. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Alpha Coach Podcast. My name is Glenn Sadana. I am a radio host and a podcaster. We've got a founder and a CEO of Alpha Coach, Ketan with us. What's happening, brother? All good, all good. Wish you a very happy new year. I'd also like to wish all our listeners and viewers a happy new year. A very, very happy new year to all of you. And most importantly, we also have uh, the co-founder and the chief product officer, Vishnu, with us. How are you doing, brother? All good, Glenn. Happy new year. Wish you the same. Well, we're talking about achieving, dreaming, believing. I think we've had these visions of doing this particular podcast or doing this particular show for a very long time. We've been sitting and contemplating over it. We've visualized this and it has been a process. We'll be talking about that process eventually. But let's start off with that one word that I, that I, you know, swear by. Faith. I said faith can move mountains. It is very, very essential for you to have faith before you begin with something or before you start with something. Uh, what is faith for you, Vishnu? Uh, for me, faith is uh, trusting in yourself, trusting people around you and being in ease with this world, right? And faith is experiential and unlike belief. Uh, you know, we sometimes confuse between faith and belief. So faith is something that we kind of build over time. Okay. So especially in fitness uh, scenario, like a lot of people uh, do not start their fitness journey because they, don't, they do not have faith in the fact that they could probably achieve where, reach where they want to reach. Right. right. But if you start off, uh, experience it, uh, make small wins, mm -hmm. build faith, then they will be able to kind of move ahead and reach their goals. So you said right. faith and belief are two different things. Faith is eventually built and belief is a system that can be borrowed. Belief can be borrowed. Like belief in God, we borrow from our parents or family, right? But right. faith, uh, you cannot. You have to experientially build it over time. Wow, yeah. beautifully put. Yeah. Okay, what's your take, man? What is faith for you? Yeah, so faith for me is the undying, you know, belief. I mean, I'm using the word, but it's it's basically the hope for a better tomorrow, hope for a better future. Uh, it helps you get started. It helps you to uh, focus on the fact that if I do X, Y, Z, something will turn out right, right? Rather than just saying, if I just believe in it, it's not going to be a miracle. It just mm. comes to mm. life, just mm. like that. But faith's what gets you started. It helps you build motivation. It sort of this thing. It helps you get started on the work that you need to do. Mm, mm. And that's what faith really is. It's mm. like, think about this. If you don't have that faith, mm. or rather the absence of faith, right. uh, would mean that you are already pessimistic about the outcome of what you're beginning to do, right? right. For example, this is the new year. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people have aspirations. 2022 should be a better year than the past mm -hmm. two years uh, for all of us. And uh, if we don't have that positivity to say, you know, this will turn out well, we will do better, we will achieve some things out of our goals this year, etc., etc., then you start off on a bad note. So faith gives you that positivity, it helps you do all that thing, mm. and it helps you focus on winning, right? Uh, I always say that there are two types of competitors in this world. Ones that focus on winning and the others that focus on the winners, and that's why they basically lose. So the idea is to focus and know that if you do it, and you do these X, Y, Z steps, you will get there. And that's mm. that's faith, mm. the whole cycle of it. True. Uh, you started the Alpha Coach, this application, and uh, which is all about fitness and helping people improve their lives and uh, take fitness to a next level or to help people even begin their fitness journeys. Just tell me, when you start something like this, and when you have a well-paying job, you left something that was paying you really well. So there are a lot of naysayers. There are a lot of people who will come and tell you, you know, what are you doing? How are you going to manage this? There's a lot of pessimism, especially from your immediate family, friends, people who care about you and mostly people who care about you. How do you keep your faith and your belief systems intact? Especially, you've started a business of your own. How do you manage that, man? 
Well, I mean, you have to know, you have to believe in what you, why you started it. Okay. Honestly, you mm. have to remember why you started that particular thing. There was a reason why you took that step. Right. Uh, there was a reason why I said, you know what, I've done my job for 20 old years. I've right. Done, I've, I've, I've right. done financial services. I liked what I was doing. Right. But I think there's a time that you say, I want to do something different. For uh -huh. example, this is in my business, for okay. example. Um, similarly, uh, when it comes to your fitness, when it comes to other goals in life, mm. whether, you know, you had some trigger uh, or some incident or some time in your life when you decided to make that change. Mm -hmm. And that reason or deep down the why behind it is what you need to remember when you are facing the trouble as well. You know, you, you wanted to do something better. You start out on a path that mm -hmm. may not be the path that everybody takes right uh, it could be it could eventually turn out wrong but if you started with the right intent with the right faith and took the right actions to get there uh, that's one thing that should keep you chugging along and going there towards your path right uh, the second thing uh, very important although yeah we can hustle hard and being founders we're very alone you know where we you know we have to be like we take up all of the mental stress of the entire business, right? Right. right. Uh, and we are lonely on these things as well. I mean, just, like he and I only have us to talk to about mm -hmm. it. And, mm -hmm. you know, wherever the, whenever we see ourselves uh, facing difficulties and where, whatever. Uh, similarly, when you're on a fitness journey where you're cutting down on calories, when you have so much work to do. Mm. So you have to do what it takes when you have to do it. I do. Mm. I think we give far too much importance to a party and, oh my God, I need to cut out on alcohol mm. and I'm, am I living it up enough and whatnot. Yeah. But you have to do what it takes to achieve your individual goals because they're not going to be the same as the person next to you, even in the same organization, right? Uh, and then to be able to g do this mm -hmm. uh, well, since we are... Like I said, like I was talking to the fact that we are, you know, lonely on this road and you feel right. lonely on this road. Like I was giving the founder's example. Uh, similarly on that, find other people who are doing the same thing. There are hundreds and thousands of people right now trying to get fitter. Right. Yeah. There are communities online. We have our own Facebook inside a group the, that has a community built into it. Yeah. So people talk to each other. People can post about what their wins were, post about what hurdles they're facing, ask us questions mm. and so on and so forth. Right. You know, there's a, there's a certain joy and there's a certain calm in knowing that when you're in a community, when you know that all of you are, you know, uh, trying to find a solution to a common problem, there are a couple of people who have come together and are mm. trying to uplift each other. And this is what community does, yeah, right? Humans yeah. are social animals. We right. find safety in numbers. Yeah. And the community, so the yeah. village, the family, the nation always takes care of their own, right? right? So if you're part of that community, especially during a difficult time, mm -hmm then you can find not just solace, but also a lot of, uh, you know, a shoulder to uh, this thing on. Uh, somebody to understand what you're right, going yeah, through right. and guide you along that yeah, project. Yeah. You know, I uh, we, we spoke about having faith, faith as being the starting point. But it's also very important to visualize something that you want to achieve. Like, let me give you an example. What happened mm -hmm. is, um, I had visualized winning a particular show. Now, this may seem straight out of a, mm -hmm. a comic book or, yeah. a, or a novel or a, a fiction novel, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually telling you the truth. So I visualized me after the whole workout, sit and work on my craft. I would mm. work on it. It was not just vis visualization and just, yeah, yeah, you know, just wishing that it happened. <laughs> I would experience myself over there, but I'd come back and work. Mm. Cut to one month after that. I win that competition. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, wow. The power of visualization. It took me 30 days. It could take someone 30 months. It could take somebody 13 days. I don't yeah. know. But hey, it actually worked because it was not just visualizing something, but actually working towards that vision yeah. and eating, breathing and sensing that vision. And it was so powerful. It was a divine experience. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So this is this is a technique. Uh, it's a very good book, uh, old book. Uh, called Think and Grow Rich, mm -hmm. right? Which talks about the power of the subconscious mind and auto suggestion and affirmations. And right, stuff like right, that. right. So the thirteen different chapters, yeah. uh, and all of them basically converge onto this one thing in which you have this morning and night affirmations where you actually write down your goals. Right. You write down when you will achieve it. Right, right. And then it doesn't stop at that, wherein you're just hoping it works. Right. right. Then you actually have to write down what will you give out. So that that value comes out to you. Now that's talking more about riches, right? And riches is a good thing, right? Uh, without sounding very shallow, mm. but the thing is that any such goal can 
in my opinion be achieved just by reading about it every single morning as soon as you wake up so mm-hmm. now you know in your waking mind what to do uh-huh. and when you go to bed you start visualizing it in a subconscious mind right right thing. it becomes a part of you it becomes a part of your i'd say dna quite literally when you start right. having that goal right in front of you wish to yeah. what's your take on this yeah so uh, in it's a very powerful tool in coaching scenario we use it uh, very much we okay. call it the destination postcard uh, so we i actually borrowed this word from uh, uh, dan heath uh, there's a book called switch where he talks about it. so but we uh, quite well use this uh, word thing called destination postcard right. where we ask trainees to kind of visualize what it would be when they achieve that particular goal of theirs right and then uh, back it up with a, a strong behavioral script then that's super powerful and now uh, i'll give an example when most people who start uh, training uh they start with goals like i want to lose weight uh gain muscle look better right but when we dig down for deeper why's as to why they want to do it then uh, we get powerful answers very interesting answers like probably uh, wanting to play football with their children or you know uh, being able to carry their grandkids uh, uh, or or being able to go for a trek or feeling like how they felt in their 20s because now they are feeling old and you know worn out right so those becomes their deeper why's and now we ask them to write a destination postcard as to you know, how it will be like when you achieve that goal and that becomes and now how, what you need to do to reach that particular goal and the coach usually what they do is constantly uh, ask them about okay this is what you're working towards this is how you're going to be when you reach there and this is what you need to do to get there that become a strong motivator for people to kind of work towards their goal so uh visualization is very powerful and uh, visualization alone won't work you need to have a behavioral script to back up how how you're going to get there you so, know i've never heard of any sort of coaching where someone is diving so deep into the person's thought process like i've heard of people having their transformations i've i've seen mm. uh people make changes in their life and i've seen coaches work but you're saying with the kind of coaching that you guys provide you guys actually go into such intricate detailing so yeah if yeah. you find the right motivation you need you know how to be able to guide a person through mm-hmm. this right if it's not just about wanting to get rich suppose mm-hmm. imagine a person who's grown up in a very poor family and uh, his motivation to get rich would be to get his family a nicer house a nicer place to stay etc right but another person's motivation may be something very different and then the scale of richness would also be different right, right. similarly with with fitness the goals are so different the reason for example if in a, for a mother of two mm. it might be just to feel better and have enough energy to manage the house the kids and you know and then manage her work and what not for a person with a high pressure job it may be we able to get through those hard deal negotiations whatever it is right so everybody's starting point this thing bodies minds everything is different mm-hmm. so you can't have one set of goals it has to be and the in the unique very personal goals come deep down they're not the first thing that you imagine so technically it's very very important to identify the why why yes what is the motivator why mm-hmm. we spoke on motivators and the right motivators in our initial episodes and we said you know sometimes our external motivators can be great starts but they just the start they mm-hmm. uh, they're not long term they're not something that you could sustain for a very long time and this right. is my personal opinion on it when you have the motivator which originates from within and you understand why it's sustainable mm. uh you know we're talking about finding the right motivators you spoke about the a very interesting concept about the final destination the mm. or the fi- not the final destination <laughs> i'm talking about the, the destination postcard mm. so we come from a world where we're constantly comparing ourselves and why speak about the world i'll i'll speak for myself you're looking at a social media post and you're like i wish i could do this mm. ah how long is it going to take me to achieve this body why why do i have this extra layer mm. of you know why am i feeling this why can't i have biceps like those why can't i have a six pack constantly mm. you're constantly comparing yeah. yeah how do you tell your mind okay let's be realistic yeah so social media in general is all about the flex right you uh, should not uh Uh, set goals based on how other people's lives look on social media in general right uh, you know so you read a book then you will have to kind of 
show to the world that you read a book or uh, let's say I, I did a workout I want to post the video of my dad left him and why you know it's it's basically always uh, people are seeking validation I mean I nothing against this thing I mean it's also a social way of engaging now there is another extent where people would post, post a picture of a new watch they bought with the price tag as well you know just kind of you know showing that I did this uh, so if you think it's it's there sometimes it could be their way of getting validation from outside to feel probably less insecure. Now, uh, you don't have to compare yourself with that and feel insecure yourself. You know, uh, the comparison has to stop. You know, how do you stop that comparison if you have that awareness that uh, life is not all uh, rosy and perfect uh, like what we see on social media in general? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. you, said, you said a very valid point that a lot of times we put out our best selves on social media. Hmm. We always want to show that I've had the best time ever. Hmm. Yes, eventually people have also started being very, very real on social media. And there are hmm. a lot of posts speaking about very realistic things. True. Uh, but most of the times we're always trying to put out our best side over social it, media. But that's, sorry, sorry to interject hmm. you. But the thing is that you know, that's that's with anything, right? Social yeah. media is one media source. Hmm. Earlier, you had even when you step out of the house, mm. you wear your best clothes. You don't mm, yeah. you don't show what the rest of the house looks like. Yeah. When when, <laughs> yeah. when you start you start cleaning up house as soon as you know guests, guests are visiting. Are <laughs> all the all the clothes on the dresser and yeah. this and that they all start going. To. So we want to present ourselves as the best, but trying to compare yourself with somebody else, you know, comparing with Joneses as they call it and whatnot, yeah. like is obviously never going to be that healthy in the long run. Uh, it's also, um, you know, there's also this thing about you versus you. Hmm. But I don't think it's you versus you also. I think it's like you are your best friend. Help yourself. Just get better. Mm -hmm. You have a basic goal. Yeah. Also on social media, you can just look at people's these things and you can feel happy about it. Oh, they are doing great. Yeah. So, uh, it nice. should drive you. Yeah, it drives you. Nice. They are doing great. I'm happy about it. Uh, why do you have to compare and feel bad about it I mean uh, yeah. then whose problem is that it's that the person's problem who posted or it's our own problem like we are not happy about it and we are unhappy about you know somebody else yeah. doing good yeah. wow <laughs> so, that, 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 that is definitely <laughs> a point no but I yeah. actually make a lot yeah. of sense because if, if you and what you said you need mm. to feel happy that wow this is encouraging me to either do better or just feel happy and content yeah, yeah. okay yeah. well done but yeah let's, let's also face this we're, we're living in a very competitive world also be, be it businesses be it anything that mm. that we have to do in our daily lives um, starting a business starting something new or just in the general scheme of things we started off with belief we started off then we spoke about having a vision but for that vision to sustain and f like I had certain practices and processes put in place for my comedy show. I knew what I had to do. But sometimes you don't have an end destination. Mm -hmm. But you need to inculcate and develop certain habits. What are the habits that you have or in the general scheme of things you think one needs to have in order to sustain their vision? Yeah, so I think the the first habit and is that I like to start with the day especially with gratitude. Right, uh, a lot of people have this thing wherein they're going through tough. You know, the day is going to be tough. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not life's not a bed of roses, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the day is going to have some challenges. You, the day is going to have you making tough decisions. The day is going to have you putting in a lot of hard work every single day. Everybody, any job, any career, any any business, right? Any business and relationships and everything. The idea is that if you start with gratitude and say that instead of saying I have to do this and you replace that with I am able to do this right yeah. it changes your perspective completely it's like it I am able to choose the foods I can eat versus being given whatever is made at home or whatever you can afford right I am able to go and train in the gym versus saying I don't have the money to even afford a gym uh, or the ability to go to a gym right if you're not able to do that uh, if you have these choices and choice gives you freedom that's the biggest ROI so if you say it with gratitude say I'm able to do certain things that's I think the first thing that I start with I actually have this in part of my win the day affirmation for the day that's the first point of it right the second thing that I like to do is I have to I make sure that the previous night itself I have my to-do list completely filled up so I work according to a calendar mm -hmm. uh, I ensure that whatever it is whether it's me writing uh, an, uh, an emailer that needs to go out or me working on some sort of a business model or me having any discussions or even having some me time for myself I try and put it on a calendar so I make sure that it's completely 
done. Follow to the T, basically. Follow to the T, and those are done, and they are now planned. I can't get out of it, right? Those are important things. I mean, then and when I say I fill my calendar, I actually make sure I have time for my workouts, I have time for my meals, I have times for my, uh, you know, cardio, running, steps, whatever. I make sure those things get filled in so that those are again non-negotiables, and they are part of my calendar. Wow. So time management is the key here. I've right. seen Ketan do this uh, very meticulously. Uh, uh, you know, slotting out time for each and everything. I've never been able to do that to that extent. To some extent, yes, but I think everything boils down to managing your time the best way possible. I mean, how you get to do it is is, is up to you. Maybe you have kids, you may need to wake up early and get the work done before they kind of uh, start, start, their the, start their day, right? You know, uh, so it's, it's, it's very, very, very... Uh, personal to everyone how they manage the time but that skill to uh, manage time is critical i'll yeah. tell you how you yeah. do it like what ketan said mm. have a system <laughs> have processes in place <laughs> process driven and system because then you know right yeah. you this it's it, there's a there's a blueprint in front of you mm. you know you've got to follow these particular steps i have this bowl of i call it the gratitude bowl so at mm-hmm. home i had this extra bowl and i was i was a little down and out uh, a few months back and I and I, I started being a little crabbity about things and I was cribbing about why I don't have this and why why aren't things moving in the direction that I want them to move. And I said, hey, let's try this. I'd take a chit every day mm. and uh, I'd write that one thing that I'm very grateful for or I have gratitude, immense gratitude for in a day. And every day I'd come and drop a chit. Eventually that bowl started getting full. And the days I used to feel down and out, I used to just shut my eyes, randomly pull pull out one shit and read. You know, I felt I had so much going for myself. I had so many good things happening in life, right? Yeah, I think I think the thing is that, you know, gratitude for life and all is amazing, right? I mean, you have to have it and I think it's very, very important. But I think very importantly, again, is that you need to have gratitude for the people around you that have been with you and, uh, you know, sort of helped you elevate yourself, right? For example, uh, I have my brother, uh, Siddharth, who's always been that rock in my life for the last many, many years. Um, then my and my ex-boss, Kabir, who actually taught me how to be a good person to work with. Uh, and we managed to build a good team around us now, you know, because it was not just about um, paying well or, you know, giving good work, but also about giving you something rewarding to do, uh, mm-hmm. propping you up, giving you limelight, and g- enabling right. opportunities and so on and so forth. Uh, there are there's a good friend of mine who's been my career north north star and you know he's always like three he always seems like he's three years ahead of me this guy called Anoop very very close friend of mine for 20 plus years now and uh, and then there are my you know parents in law you know uh, my my wife's parents and they've they the energy the love everything about them is just just amazing right so there are plenty of those examples that can come up. Uh, and I try and find, you know, every person that you meet everywhere, whether it's a uh, person at work, person in your building, person your neighbor, anybody, I think they all leave that little bit of impression on you. And if you can just find what is that great takeaway that they can offer to you, I think you can add value just by meeting and, you know, more and more people. I think it's it's just honestly that. You said a very interesting mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. You can find motivation everywhere. You just have to look and you've just got to seek. Uh, I'd like to conclude this by saying what my mentor, my coach rather, Bhavna had uh, said this to me once. She said, focus on the what is rather than the what if. Life so is going to be beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is the Alpha Coach Podcast. My name is Glenn Sildana. We've got Ketan, Vishnu and we're signing off.